Professor Donald just used a word that's rarely uttered by a top civil servant, the word crisis, a word that's overused by many politicians. But this is a genuine crisis <coughs> of, as he said, unprecedented proportions for our country in peacetime. The Prime Minister has failed, not just once, but three times, to get her Brexit deal through Parliament and to force it, as she's trying to do, on the British people. We're no longer, even at the 11th hour, that passed last week. Now a few minutes past midnight, in this short extension of the Brexit deadline, Theresa May is facing up at last to the reality of needing a significantly longer period in which Parliament, not the government, will be charged with finding the solution, and in doing so she's put in my party, and its leader, Jeremy Corbyn, in what's potentially a very powerful position. There's a great opportunity here to prevent the slide towards a cliff edge of a no-deal departure. But of course, there are also great risks. If we are to find a way out of this mess together, a solution must include the Labour Party and indeed MPs from other parties who've steadfastly opposed the Prime Minister's deal. But it can't exclude the overwhelming majority of Labour MPs, and again, those from other parties, who last week voted for a motion which would require any final deal agreed in Parliament also to be agreed by the people. Twice, it's proven to be the single most popular proposal in indicative votes of MPs. There's not a majority for it yet in this deadlocked Parliament, because we've always said that a, a people's vote, a confirmatory vote, is not just one option to the crisis. As Gus said a moment ago, it's a solution to this crisis. This morning, ahead of what will be a crucial and historic few days in Parliament, it's imperative that we continue to explore what version of Brexit might be the most acceptable to MPs. And I voted this week both for the Customs Union proposal that Kenneth Clark put forward and for the Common Market 2 proposal set out by Nick Bowles, and both deserve, and indeed need, proper and detailed consideration. But if any new proposals to command the support of the Labour Party, whose voters, members and MPs want the public to have the final say if it's to secure a stable majority in Parliament, and if it's to gain the confidence of the country, it can't and mustn't preclude the idea that any Brexit deal should be put to the people. A fresh extension needs to be long enough to give Parliament the time it needs to scrutinise any proposals, including, of course, the major piece of legislation which is still to come. We haven't even seen the withdrawal bill. We need to have the time for these things. A fresh extension must be long enough to give our civil servants the time they need to negotiate any viable deal with the European Union. They haven't been asked yet. And a fresh extension must be long enough to have a vote in which the people, and not just MPs like me, decide what the future direction of the country ought to be. So there are three things that Jeremy Corbyn must extract from the Prime Minister. No to no deal. There must be a long enough extension to be worthwhile. And any outcome must include a confirmatory vote for the people of this country.